Okay, welcome to the second day uh, of DeepSec conference. Uh, we now have a talk on Bluetooth uh, privacy issues um, by Veronica Valeros and Garcia Sebastian, and I'm looking forward to the talk. Thank you. So, hi, hi everyone. Hi, uh, so in, uh, how are you? Welcome, everyone. Uh, so, well, you know, this is our talk, uh, uh, and you understand, I'm sure, right? It's like, uh, well, we don't know what this is. <laughs> <laughs> but sounds cool, right? Yeah, yeah it has a lot of uh, interesting words, like cyber. We yeah. have to say cyber, right? And there are something called hard observers. I, I don't know what that is also, but who cares? Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Uh, no, 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 just Okay, kidding. this is true. Yeah, this is the name of our talk. Um, I'm Sebastian Garcia. I'm Veronica Valeros. And um, we are members of a Hackspace that it's called MATLAB Hackspace in Argentina. Um, we also work in computer security and this type of stuff for fun and for, for money. Um, we are going to talk to you about uncovering your trails, privacy issues of Bluetooth devices. Um, we hope you like it. It's something we have really fun making of. So, so we, we wanted uh, to talk about, as Sebastian said, uh, about our Bluetooth while, while driving. Um, the motivation was to, to have a tool to, that allow us to create, uh, to capture Bluetooth devices uh, and have uh, also the information about the GPS uh, at the same time. Um, we, don't, we don't focus uh, only on the position that on the data captured, but also on what do this means in, in a social environment. Why do this is uh, relevant? Yes, we, we have some, when we started with this project doing Bluetooth, Bluetooth is really old and a lot of people were, was analyzing this for a lot of years, but we start looking at this, as Veronica said, looking for something else. We wanted to have visualization, we wanted to have correlation, social significance, we wanted to have this information along with the devices. Because when you do a wild drive, usually using Wi-Fi, you have this information. And there was no tool doing this for Bluetooth. You cannot go into the street and capture these devices using Bluetooth, GPS, and have this information for analysis. So with this motivation, we start working. And we found that some interesting stuff. We say, hey, there are some social aspects of Bluetooth that we are really interested in. It's not only the technology. For example, now for us, it's really, this is easy and it's, it's nothing new, right? But most of the time, a mobile phone is used by the same individual. And this was not happening 20 years ago or 15 years ago. Now, you, you own your device, and you're not going to give your phone to no one else. So your device is with you all the time, OK? And it's on all the time. So if you find the phone, you find the owner. And this is really interesting. Your phone identifies you completely. Okay. Yeah. It can it can seem that it's not straightforward, but mm -hmm. it's uh, really interesting when you also start analyzing the data and correlate the data uh, with the position, and you start seeing uh, behavior behavior of the phones, and this means behavior of the people, the owner of the phone. So for us, this is like was really uh, nice to start understanding. Before starting, you all know Bluetooth, I'm sure about that, but let me just talk a little bit about what Bluetooth may be or is, so we are start from the same point. So it's a wireless communication standard designed for short range using the same frequency of Wi-Fi, sort of. And you have mainly three classes. You know, when you buy a Bluetooth dongle, then it's class one, class two, class three. And these classes were or are changing the power that they are using, you can see, and the typical range in meters, like the first class, 100 meters, second class, 10 meters, and the third one is one meter. 
and the range is shorter because they are using less power. And this is good because when you have a Bluetooth in your phone, on your, on your laptop, you want it to, to use as, as less power as it can so your computer battery lasts long. So this is good and you can have these ranges. But this is, uh, we may say it's not true in the sense that yeah, the typically communication rate is one meter if you're using two Bluetooth devices in the standard, okay? If you have two, two phones, two computers, yes, one meter is the maximum range. But if you build your own antenna and you have your own power supply, it has been demonstrated like two years ago that you can communicate with a phone in one kilometer or more, okay? So it's not that, no, Bluetooth, it's something this like a kind of uh, um, safety or security, how do you say? Like well, it, yeah, yeah, it's not true, you know, you feel safe because no, Bluetooth, you know, it's like One three meter, meters, yeah. right? It's okay, but it's not. Someone can communicate with you in more than one kilometer, so uh -huh. be aware of that. So what we, what, what we propose? Um, we, we created a, t a tool that is called Blue Driving. Um, it, it has um, almost a year of since uh, we start creating it, and he has uh, three main like modules. Uh, the first one is, uh, is called BlueDriving.p. Uh, as you might notice, it's created in Python. Um, the functionality is to discover and, and collect all the information uh, around. So basically, we Bluetooth is really difficult to program. So uh, it's, it's going, it, it was really difficult to make uh, something working uh, really good. So because e e between every scan, Bluetooth takes a lot of time. So we went to like a multi-threading uh, program. So we have one thread that is continually, continuously scanning for new devices. And there are other threads that are storing this information and processing and also look for information from the devices and other. Then we have the Blue Driving Web Server that is um, it's a great tool. It's uh, a web page that collects, uh, took the information from, from the da database, um, displays it and allows us to visualize, visualize the data, correlate, uh, see other interesting things that you are missing on the console. Um, also, we have a ManageDB uh, module that is mainly for uh, querying information from the database, uh, information extraction numbers, right? And start counting how many devices has this same vendor or etc. And all of three, uh, these three modules use the same database. Uh, there is a, we use a SQLite database. Um, so all of them took and put information from there. So we are not the first one working on this, or, or yes, in this social point of view, but m you may know some previous tool like BlueLog, this is a scanner, but it's not using GPS. BlueSniff, also a s Bluetooth scanner, but no GPS also. The Pound tool and Blue Diving, they are scanners and attackers, so they scan and automatically scan, and uh, no GPS. I'm not sure if they're working, not, not for me at least. And uh, the BT scanner is also a scanner for Bluetooth, but th that's, there is no GPS there. And another tools are Kismet. We all know Kismet is the wire driving tool, de facto wire driving tool. Uh, it has a scanner with GPS but, and Bluetooth, but I'm not sure if it's working. I don't know if any of you try Kismet with Bluetooth and GPS and it's working. Not for me. Bluetooth is working, GPS is working, Wi-Fi is working, but not all together. You, you don't have the information of the GPS for Bluetooth. So I'm not sure if this is correctly working. And finally, there has no um, features for following people, okay? So it's only getting the information. Then you have Wiggle Bluetooth in the iDrone, good application, good one, but no GPS there. And Blue Mahao, it's not working anymore, it's really old. And we published the Blue Driving tool in November 2012, and 
in this year, in February this year, there was a new tool called Web Career. It's a scanner with GPS, Bluetooth scanner, but has no following features also. Okay, so this is the only tool that has all the GPS now on it. So with this previous tool, we will start describing our work. Our work, as Veronica said, has three main parts, and this is the feature of all, all the tools all together, right? Okay, so with our tool, you can find Bluetooth devices. You can find services in the devices. You know the services when you connect to a device. You say, hey, this device is going to give you access to the SIM card, or it's going to give you access to the headphones, or to the phone logs, or to the contact list. It's like, right, yeah? So when you connect to your car, for example, and you want to have audio there, so these services can be discovered. We get the position using a GPS. You can use a GPS from a GPS dongle, like this, a common USB GPS dongle that you can buy, or you can get the GPS from your cell phone. So your, the GPS from your cell phone can be used in this tool also. And finally, we have a, an option called the Puerman GPS because not all of you have a GPS dongle and not all of you have a phone maybe with GPS. So this option works like this. You start the program and you say, hey, program, I'm in this GPS position right now. So you go to Google Maps and you get the GPS position where you are, you, you find the place you want to be, and you say the program. Just imagine you are here. So for, if you are not moving, you are getting the information with the position, GPS position, and it's really useful. For example, if you want to stay at home or at work or, or something like that. Yeah. And or, or sometimes when you are, for example, inside a building, and it's really hard, maybe it's impossible to get GPS, or maybe it takes like half an hour and you lost a lot of devices in there, so you should put a fixed GPS, and you know that it's in that building, so you have like... Yeah. And also you can say, not only the GPS numbers, but you can say, I'm in this street, in this, like, I don't know, the, the address of the hotel, but you can say the street and the number, <coughs> and the program is automatically converting this to the GPS position and storing in the database, okay? So we also store the history of all the positions of your devices, and we get the real world address from GPS, I already said this. It also has an online and offline web page that allows us to independently if the blue driving dot p is running. Uh, we can start the web server and analyze the information uh, um, independently. Um, it also has a, a cool feature that is um, uh, you can resolve from the MAC address. Uh, you use uh, an API to get the vendor um, of the MAC address. So this is uh, really interesting because sometimes you don't know. Sometimes the name of the, blu uh, the, the Bluetooth device says something like LG or Nokia. So you can have an idea of what it is, but sometimes you don't know anything about that. Mm -hmm. So having the vendor, you can uh, have a lot of information there. Mm -hmm. um, it also allows you uh, to visualize the devices in maps. So you can see in, in the street, you see the map where, where you were walking and you see which devices were you, were you finding in each place. Um, and we were also interesting because uh, when you are going on the street doing while driving or Bluetooth while driving, you usually are not looking with the computer looking at the display, right? because it's really uncomfortable people looking at you and say, oh, what are you doing? So we want to say, okay, I want to be hands-free, normally walking, and be able to try to recognize if I'm having GPS or not. I don't have to be opening my laptop every time. So uh, we made some, add some features. Um, the most interesting ones are the uh, different states of zones. So if we have different zones like if we find a new device, if we find a device that we already seen, um, if we, for example, get a GPS um, a data, uh, also if we lost GPS, we want to know so you can stay in the same place until you get GPS and keep working. Um, also, um, we added some alerts that is especially interesting when you are following someone because 
you can add, okay, this is uh, Sebastian Bluetooth because I, I know that he, this is his Bluetooth. So I want to, uh, the program to play some alerts when he's near me. So for example, I'm working and then he arrives at work and when I, my program see the Bluetooth, it will play a song like, hey, Sebastian is here because it's 20 meters he's entering. So it's, it's really nice. Yeah. And it's good because, like Veronica said, you, you, you just walk in and you say, okay, I just lost, G lost GPS, and you stay and say, okay, I have something new, something new, okay, I, I have GPS. Oh, I, I just saw the same device for the second time. So you can differentiate between a new device and a, a device you have seen previously. So it's like, oh, this one, I already, I already have it in the database. Oh, this one is another. So you just walk in and like listening to music and you know what's happening. You can be moving. You know. It's going to be odd if you are doing like this, but you are going to be hands-free, okay? Mm -hmm. um, finally, we can analyze this data uh, offline, so it's good for, for working at home also. Oh, we can show the sounds. Yeah, or maybe sounds. you can hear the sounds. We have here, um, I don't know how it is going. Oh. Where? Here? This one? Oh, here, here. Thank you. Okay. Put it lower. Yeah. Um, for example, this is when we get GPS. I hope it works. So that's the GPS is locked. So you're working and you hear that when the GPS is locked, okay? This is when, when you find a new device? That's a new device. Yeah. Um, and you have... Mm -hmm. No device with GPS, for example. That is that you are not finding anything because you, if the sound goes off, you don't know if battery is off, if something is not working. So there is a sound for nothing new, nothing happened, but you have GPS, or nothing is happening, but you don't have GPS. Like okay? this. That is, hey, you don't have GPS. So you yeah. say, hey, what's happening? Um, this is the sound of the alarm. The alarm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we found it. Yeah. <laughs> you will yeah. able to notice that. So. Yeah. Hopefully you have a headset and you don't have a speaker in your hand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this makes more sense when you are using, for example, instead of your computer, um, some Raspberry Pi or some mm -hmm. kind of these things that you don't, even if you want, you cannot see what is mm -hmm. happening there. So you just put the headphones and it's you, you, are, you have everything you need. Hmm. So this is the Blue Driving main console. It's uh, working on Python. And you can see, like, yeah, this is the date when the device was captured, the MAC address, the device name. This is the global position. And the global position is automatically translated to the address. And then you have, like, the services here. So you can see that this is a wireless IIP. This is usually uh, iPhone or iMac or iPad service only for, for Apple. So you may be sure that this is an Apple device. And then you have devices for audio and video. And this is an audio source. So this device usually is giving audio to, audio to some car or to some speakers or something like that. You have the hands-free getaway also for cars. Uh, OK, and none, it's like nothing else. Yeah. So, so you, 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 yeah, this is running continuously. And you are listening to the sounds and listening to the information while you are going. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we can we can show it also. Mm. We are going to try to make some demo. Yeah. Some. So here we, we can show you. We are we are connected. This is the Raspberry Pi we are using, and this Raspberry Pi. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it has a Bluetooth device. I'm sure you cannot see that. And there is a GPS dongle here. And this is the connection to the to the battery or to the computer now. And this is Ethernet, so we can access the Raspberry Pi and, and do what Bernica is doing right now. And we usually use some battery, common battery like this, so you have nine hours or something of Raspberry Pi working. Uh, I will put it just 
without the options. So um, the, uh, sh show the, the, the help. So when you're running and you have the help, you say you can give a different database name, if you want the web server or not, the port, if you want sounds, if you have internet or you don't have internet, if you want to look up devices or not, the GPS or not. And this is the fake GPS option I was talking to you that it's like putting the GPS by hand. Because uh, as Veronica said, it's really difficult to work with Bluetooth. You, you imagine like, hey, capturing packets, right? You get the device and you just get the packets, and it's not like that. Y the device is really slow, and you have to wait for some data, and the device is not talking to you for five seconds, and then if you try to put this in thread, all the threads are, are working together, and the Bluetooth explodes in the air, and you have to take the Bluetooth off, and on, and off, and on, and restart, and this is really common, because the standard is not designed for war driving, so it's not easy to do it. That's why we have something like, hey, you don't have GPS, don't use sounds, don't use the lookup, so the, the scanning is faster, yeah. right? And ah, you can also, oh, we didn't say that, but in alerts, when you, when you say, okay, if you find the device, send me an alert, you can also send an email. So you can say, hey, if you find this guy, just send me an email. So you can be working and you leave the device there, and if this, the device you are monitoring is around you, it's going to send you an email. And okay, now it's working. You, you, can uh, we, can uh, we? Um, make it. Yeah, make it bigger? Yeah, I can make it bigger, but it won't fit. Ah, uh, it won't fit, okay. So, so but, but I can. Uh, this is you. Uh, we also, the tool has uh, some um, uh, runtime options that, for example, you can turn off <coughs> some features uh, when you're, it's working. For example, I should mm -hmm. press L and enter, and so the lookup of the devices is uh, deactivated. So <coughs> right now I can. And now you have, for example, here. <coughs> we are in a different place. <laughs> yeah, we have someone that is using a Nokia device, and you can see, uh, put, put it uh, smaller. And you can see that it's giving, this is really small, but it's giving imaging services, the OBEX file transfer, phone book access, so, so one of you is doing this. And the, the, th the issue with this talk, it's like, okay, being aware of this. It's like, hey, you know you are doing this? Are you aware that you are with your Bluetooth on, discoverable, and you are sharing this information with the rest of the world? So this is the way we, we found to tell this. Okay, this is you, this is working right now. This is how we can communicate with you, okay? Some Nokia devices, <laughs> oh, what was that? Pairing, oh, someone is trying oh, to pair with you. Yeah. <laughs> that is good. <laughs> I don't want that. <laughs> don't use your Bluetooth, I told you. No, no. <laughs> uh, um, we can also, for example, uh, turn off internet. So hopefully it, it won't uh, uh, resolve the address of that coordinate. Yeah. So uh, every little uh, option um, is for speeding up the process of discovering and storage information. Mm -hmm. uh, but even uh, sometimes when you are, for example, in a big mall with uh, hundreds of people, you see that it's nothing is happening and you start worrying there is no sound and it's because there are a lot of Bluetooths and it cannot process uh, all of them at the same time. So after, I don't know, three minutes, if you stay and wait, uh, it will print 25 devices. And so Bluetooth is giving you all the data at the same time, like, yeah, these 10 devices. And you, you cannot control it. Yeah. So. This is the Bluetooth console, and this Bluetooth console, okay, it's have some features. We already talked about this. Yeah. It's working with the Bluetooth libraries, find the devices, get and check the GPS, mm -hmm. multi-thread, verify if the device is new, make the sonar alerts, and send the emails. This is the console, okay? The Python program running in the console only. Mm -hmm. And this is the web server, you can see here. So at the same time, there is another Python program that is the web server, and you can see the same information but like graphically, and so you can select the devices. I can say, hey, I want this device, and I want this device also, or this one, and you can have it run it also at the same time, and you see all the information there. I will try to, to say it live, but this wasn't working very well, so. 
le type. Oh, I didn't start the. Uh, if you start, uh, if you want the um, the web server, you should specify here. We'll see. We need to specify that we are using the web server. Um, yep. So let's see. Not sure. Let's try it. Okay. I have okay. something here. So <coughs> this is very huge. Okay. So you have the results there and you have the device information, the device map and all devices map. So we are going to see this rather quick. So if you select the device and you press on the device info button, you are going to have something like this. So this is the basic information about the device and you can set the device nodes and device alarms and you are going to see a map of the position of the device, right? So you, this is something you can use for analysis. Uh, yeah, and you can al also put some notes that this feature is only available on the web server mm -hmm. and it's useful because if you check and you make sure that uh, this device belongs to some person, you can put notes here and to for, for a memory. And then if you select another device or the same one and you press in the device map, you're going to see all the positions of the same device. So you're going to say, okay, where, is, where are the, all the places where I found the same device? And then you're going to see that this device has some pattern, okay? You are going to find the places where this individual were or, or, or is now if you are there right now, okay? So this is map is really useful for start analyzing the, the patterns in, in the behaviors. And finally, if you press in the all devices map button, you are going to say, okay, I want this amount of devices and just show them all on the map. And then it's going to go, hey, yeah, 10 or 20 devices and show them up all together in the map. Yeah. So uh, the last uh, set of tools was the ManageDB tool. Um, we, we created this because we were really needing to merge databases. That was the main purpose. And then it was growing um, because when we went to the, uh, walk to the street, we usually, each of one ca carries his uh, own uh, Raspberry with the blue driving. And we have some friends that download the tool and also do the same. So it's really interesting to be, to have several nodes capturing data and then being able to correlate it. So this, the main functionality is to, that it's able to merge that the databases. Uh, it also um, allows you to enumerate all the devices uh, that were stored and the locations. Um, also delete some device if, for example, your device is there and you don't want to, to be in the database, you can delete it. Um, it also has, um, allows you to search uh, in the database but for position. So you can say, okay, give me the, all the devices that were somehow around these GPS coordinates. So you can say, okay, I want to be, I want th all these devices were near this bus stop and you can see all along the, the days uh, um, the correlations. Um, it also uh, makes a rank with the device and the amount of times you saw it, you saw them. So it will rank on this device, you, you, you have seen this device 400 times. So, okay, who is this guy, right? So it's it really easy to, uh, it helps to analyze the, the data. Um, another uh, good fun functionality is that it uh, resolve and store the vendors in the database. So, um, uh, you can use this information for uh, analysis later. 
So now that we have already seen the tool, what you can do, and the features and the like, we're going to show some of the data that we capture in this time, right? And what we got, and what is there, what is happening, and this thing that we say, okay, for us, was really amazed when we get in the street the first time, we say, okay, let's gonna work in Bluetooth, but what's happening? I don't know, no one is using Bluetooth, you know, who is going to use it like, on the phone? And we found a lot of devices, and a lot, and a lot is like, hey, what, what's these people doing? It's like a lot of information. And they are giving you the position, and they are giving you this, this privacy information. So that's when we say, okay, we should, we should do something with this. We should show it, and we say, okay, this is happening, and you don't know about it. Or, or you, you probably maybe say, okay, yeah, there's some issue in Bluetooth, but you, you don't think that someone can follow you because you are using your phone. So in this data analysis, we found something like 8,400, in, instead of more now, devices so far. This was in four cities, approximately 200 different vendors. And if you think about phones, there are no 200 different phone vendors. So there are more than phones here, okay? Phones is just one part of the, of yeah. the issue. We were capturing this data, uh, I think, for a year. Yeah, also. maybe, yeah. Not, not all the day, of course. We no. also work and, yeah. stuff and sleep, but yeah, when we can. But you know, it's nice, like, hey, let's go to, to have dinner. And you go out and you walk in the street and you are getting information with you, right? It's like, it's like a date, no? No, normal date, okay. So this is a market chair. And this market chair is the devices that we found. You can see that Nokia has 35% of, of our market share. Samsung, Research in Motion, that is BlackBerry, Ericsson, LG, Parrot. You know the Parrot system for the cars? That you can put in the car and you can talk with your car. I'm not sure if you use it, but it's really known. A lot of unknown devices, Motorola, Hohai, Garmin, Apple, blah, 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 blah. And it, this, it doesn't mean that Nokia has more devices in the street. It means that maybe Nokia has more devices and maybe Nokia devices by default or have a tendency to have Bluetooth activated, okay? There are more, more Apple devices in the street like that, but it seems like Apple is not using Bluetooth by default so much. In fact, it has some history of not implementing some Bluetooth services, so. Yeah, oh, for okay. example, um, Apple, the iPads, uh, when you close the lid, uh, it will turn off the Bluetooth if you, if you don't have any device paired to it. Mm -hmm. So it, it won't be discoverable. So it, this might affect also that the organization of the, of the gap. Okay, so we were going to, to move quick. We have that analysis on, we found a lot of TV on the street. You say, hey, TV is like, yeah, your TV is saying, hey, I have Bluetooth. And it's also saying, look at this. Hey, I, I am a 75 inches uh, TV or I'm a 46 inches TV. Oh, that's nice, right? Because I don't want to get into your house and stole a, a small TV, right? I, I, I want the big one. So this is really huge. Right? You are saying you have a TV, and you are saying which TV and the brand of the TV. Mm -hmm. And also LG, TV, LG TVs, uh, like one month ago, it was found that they are storing information about your programs, your series, what you are watching, and they are sending the information to LG servers. So if you think about this, and that the LG TVs has Bluetooth, and may have the ability to find nearby devices, uh, this is not a good combination, right? Sending information mm -hmm. and finding you. Mm -hmm. So a lot of cars also, Audi, Ford, Skoda, Seat, Peugeot, there are a lot of cars using right. this. The interesting right. thing about the cars is uh, we found that most of them that are painted in red, they uh, have a unique vendor. So how easy is for an attacker, for example, focus to exploit just one chip and then it's easy, right? All of your ideas. And also we found parrots, Garmin, Nuvi, a lot of, of GPS for cars. And in fact, I don't know if you own a Nuvi device, but Nuvi devices have this number in the name. I'm not sure if this is the serial number of the device, but if it is, it's worse because now I, kn I know exactly which device you have, okay? And we found printers. Printers? Like, come on, what for? You know, it's a, maybe you can. Print something, and you can read documents, I don't know. And paying terminals, this is really common, the stuff where you go to the restaurant and they, they put your car, has Bluetooth on it, and it's having your credit card there with Bluetooth at the same time, okay? 
we also found uh, other interesting or freaky things. For example, uh, this is um, a device that you can measure the air in your lungs. So we found this and we didn't knew that it was this device or because it was or some person was uh, carrying it. And uh, when we see this, okay, not only the, the Bluetooth devices is first, first thing, why this has Bluetooth on it, right? Why? It's better. Uh, and next, you are not walking on the street with a sign in your back saying, oh, I have asthma or I have breathing problems, right? Uh, but your Bluetooth is doing that for you. Uh, why? Why somebody has to know that you you are using this why type of device? Why it has Bluetooth at all? You know? Okay. They they make a. It's it's here. The, the no no. The the. Do you see the health devices hacking health devices talk yesterday? It was a really good talk. Uh, they say a lot of health devices had Bluetooth, like prothesis, like peacemakers. So. This information is really huge, and in medical devices, it's more huge, okay? Mm -hmm. And we also find a lot of speakers, and this is interesting. This is a car or house alarm that it's called Jablotron, and this alarm for your house or your car has Bluetooth enabled. That's good, because I don't want to go into your house if you have alarm, and so I will check if you, has, if you have an alarm first. So this is a lot of information, again, this is, if you put all of, the toge all of this together, it's too much information about your privacy that you are giving out and you don't know. Yes. We, also, yeah, we also find that uh, the controls of the Wii also have Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. So you can, if they are turned on and you're playing and I go outside your flat, I can say, oh, he's having fun with the Wii because yeah. he's using it. Um, we also find a lot of um, um, uh, devices that are using this, uh, this same chip that um, is like generic and you put it anyway, anywhere. You just buy it and you put it whatever you want, so it's everywhere. Um, and we found that some Lego has also Bluetooth. Uh, I think Lego Mind Mindstorm. Yeah, Lego Mindstorm and yeah. it's also Bluetooth enabled. Yeah. And in this issue, we found out that there are two, two big problems here. First, some computers, Dell, in, in, it's what we found, it's enabling Bluetooth in the BIOS even if you disable it in your operating system. So you go to your operating system and say, yeah, right now, you say, hey, I don't want Bluetooth. So you put it, turn it off, and then you power off your machine, and when you power it on again, the BIOS is enabling Bluetooth, telling everyone, hi, I'm Adele, I'm here, and then it's powering off. So even if you want not to use it, it's difficult. Okay, so you can you should go to the BIOS and turn it off in the BIOS, but then you are not going to have Bluetooth in your computer. So it's a trade-off, and this is really difficult. And the, the the second issue is about cars. A lot of cars don't have the option to turn Bluetooth off. So you get into your car and you can do nothing. There is no way you can stop this. And the people is looking at you and is they know your MAC address and they know where you are and they know if you are at home or at work and you cannot stop it, okay? So this is really huge issue for us. So following people in the street, this is the Raspberry we are using or the, one of the two Raspberries we are using. And we are we going to show you some, yeah, some uh, patterns in the street um, when we found this. So when you want to follow people or a friend of you want to follow people because you don't want to follow people, right? No. Don't do that, but if you want to do it, and if you have the MAC address of the device, this is easy. You just get the MAC address, put alarm, and just go to the street and follow everyone. And you can know if this guy is in some shop, or in the mall, or it's out of some shop. It's real easy. You, you, you don't have to do nothing, and this is creepy. And if you don't have the MAC address, then you can use sounds for finding it. So imagine I want to follow I'm here, so say, yeah, I want to follow you, sorry, but this time was you. So, <laughs> so hey, Jaime is there, and I say, okay, let's gonna see if I, I found someone. So you are with the sounds, and say, hey, yeah, I have something here, but I'm not sure if it's Jaime or someone else. So I move along with Jaime to another group of people, and say, okay, I'm having someone here too. The same, or no, I'm not sure if the same, but so I, I have some device. And Jaime is here, so we move to a third group, and if Jaime is the only individual in these groups, I, 
and I continue to detect some device, I can be pretty sure that Jaime is the, the one that I found and I'm following. So you can find someone this way. It's difficult, but you can do it. Yeah. For example, he, here we put some examples about um, our file experiences. Uh, here we, we can see like this is uh, the same device, but we saw him uh, several days, different days. So this, this we found this information after analyzing it, and we say, oh, look, look at this. This person has a pattern here. So m he might be, um, for the time we capture, um, he might be going to work, right? And real uh, near there is a bus stop and also a tram stop and a metro stop. So these people is using this route every day or mostly every day. So that, that is a lot of information again about and the privacy of this individual. You can have maybe this information of other ways if you stand up every morning and see the faces. But w with, with this, it's really easy to visualize these patterns. Yeah that before you, you don't know because there are 100 persons in there, but here you say, oh, no, this unique person is doing this same pattern. Yeah. So that's shocking. And remember that uh, you, we know that the phone companies can have this information, they can track you, this is known for a lot of years, but this means that anyone can follow you, not the phone company, but anyone in the street. This is someone walking in the street also, we follow for, I don't know, it's 30 blocks or more, and it was pretty good signal in the GPS, so we have the information there, so you can walk. This is an example of using the public transportation. We're alone inside the tram, and someone in the tram was with us along the path, so we can follow along, and it was really good. This is an example of following a car with a motorcycle, so you can follow the car, and you can see that sometimes there is more space between, between the captures because the car was speeding up, so the GPS was getting information every five seconds or four seconds, so the points are more separated. Yeah. So you can follow it. Yes, five minutes left, thank um, you. For example, this is uh, four hours in a bus. So <laughs> if you see this and you think that might be me, uh, that I don't want that, right? Yeah. Yeah. We know exactly where you were. And this is interesting. Oh, maybe you, you cannot read this, but here it says, it's the same device, and this device at one time was in Switzerland, and two minutes later was in Germany, and two minutes later was in Switzerland again, and five minutes later it was in France, and then Germany, and, and so what happened? Because it's in a plane, so you can follow people in a plane also. Okay, it's not going to go anywhere, right? Because it's in a plane. But you have GPS, and you can follow, and you can have this information even there. Right? So we find out that um, it's possible to, to find people, uh, follow people, if the Bluetooth uh, is discoverable um, with a, around 20 meters of precision. Uh, you can be walking around and you can see like with certainty that, okay, it's going into a shop and you lost it, uh, but he, if he stays or you stay around 20 meters, you can find it. Um, also, if you must use the Bluetooth because, I don't know, you have a headphone and for the communication with your device you need to have it on, you cannot avoid to be tracked. That's, that's shocking because you, you want to use Bluetooth because it's useful. You have hands-free, you talk with your car, whatever. But wh at what cost, right? Um, and also, uh, it's the... the, the Tracking of this information is anonymous. No, nobody uh, knows that somebody else is following you. Yeah. And it cannot be trackable. You, you cannot be followed. It's passive, right? You just get the signal, so yeah. they, they cannot know that you are getting this information. Yeah, or tool is not doing actually any kind of attack or connection to device, just seeing who is, who is there. Hmm. And we... We, can, we have to say that the, the behavior of the persons can, can be seen, and this is uh, really important to remark. Um, we can see if someone is, uh, as Sebastian said before, someone is arriving at home, or arriving at work, or leaving, or if he's uh, turned the TV off. O all these kind of behaviors, uh, if you focus on one person, you can have a lot of information 
Oh. Uh, and also, it, it, what happens if you are with someone? What happens with your family? What happens if two phones go together? So these relationships can be formed, right? Yeah. We also think that, for example, you can say, uh, okay, I use Bluetooth. I, I, I don't care. I, I, I use it. I know I can be discoverable. It's okay. But what about uh, our, our kids? Uh, in many places, we give our kids a cell phone because we want them to be reachable. We, we care about their security. So I, I tell me, call me when you are leaving the school. And tell me when you are at home. Tell me when you ride the bus. The bus. Um, but <laughs> we, we, are we aware that by giving these devices, they can be tracked down? I, I'm sure we don't want that, right? Uh, so it, it's really important that we start like being aware of this security yes. problem. It doesn't mean that you, you should not use it, but just be aware. This can happen, okay? So legally following people, there are two different programs that are using this, let's say legally. I don't know what legally means, but in Canada, they are using this, and also in Clark County, they track the information of the Bluetooth device when you are in your car, in the road, and then they get your information back when you are out of the road, and they measure the time and the distance and say the speed. So you have a sign that says, hey, it's going to take 10 minutes to get out of here. So this, they get this information capturing Bluetooth devices without okay. your permission. But they say, hey, don't worry, because this is, there's no privacy issue here, right? It's like, we don't, we don't do nothing with this. We, so we store it, but we don't know who you are. And okay, if this is right, but should be careful, because this should be abused, okay? Yeah, we're out of time. Yeah. It's just, it's just, just one, two, two more. So this is you here, this is uh, a graph of uh, DeepSec conference, and it was amazing. 30% of the people here in the conference is being discovered by Bluetooth, right? And we are security professionals. We work on this, and we don't know about this. So this information is about you, and this is important. Like, you say, no, no one is using this. 30% of the people here and in the street are using this. And, okay, and final remarks are like that. Be aware, use it if you have, turn it off, okay? Yeah. This can happen. So that's all. And thank you. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Have you noticed uh, a lot of Bluetooth devices at gas stations at all? Not just because of cars, but uh, one of the things that I, I think has been in the media lately is uh, these skimmer devices. And the skimmers, the people that are hacking uh, the, you know, the stolen credit card information, are using Bluetooth to to uh, query the skimmers and retrieve the credit cards, just like you mentioned, the, the payment card information. So those payment terminals may actually be hacked by hackers. And so you could use this technology to find those hackers, potentially. Yeah, I think I saw that. They're using Bluetooth for this. Yeah, so if you like filtered out all the cars and you looked at gas stations, you could probably find hackers trying to use skimmers. Oh, that's good information, because I, I didn't know. I can try it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can try to find them. <laughs> I mean, right, of course. Have you uh, tried to, to uh, change the MAC address at all? Like, uh, you know, like in Wi-Fi, you could change your, your local MAC address by like spoofing your MAC address. Can you spoof the Bluetooth MAC address, or is, does the hardware prevent that? Uh, I, I think we didn't try. Yeah. No. Not sure about that. I'm not sure about the driver. The, the, all the tools for Bluetooth are really, really difficult, and they are not working, reliable. So you use them, and it's working. Out. And you change, for example, every time, I, I, I change or I move my Bluetooth device, everything is exploding. And you, I have to put the module off and reload the module. I don't know what's happening there. So, so maybe it can be done. We don't know. I think we have to break here. You're still in the vicinity to discuss, maybe in the coffee break. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.